Hello, friends, and welcome back to Malicious Compliance Stories. I'm not a lawyer, but just from being a longtime lurker on here, one thing I learned is to never mess around with trees. A licensed landscaper and arborist caused damage to my tree. When I came home from picking my kids up from school yesterday, my seven-year-old daughter, if that gives any clue on how drastically he changed it, asked me where all the branches on our tree went. When I looked at what once was a beautiful, full, weepy eucalyptus tree, there stood a wimpy, frail, and freshly butchered tree. I was in disbelief. I work from home, so earlier that morning I heard my neighbor's landscaper cutting their grass. He's been cutting their grass as long as I've rented the house, which is going on five years now. I immediately thought of him, so I walked next door to the elderly couple's house and asked if they thought their yard guy would take it upon himself to groom my tree. They both said no way but they had cameras and would certainly look into it. Yesterday evening, my neighbor came over to tell me it was her landscaper. The cameras didn't catch it, but she asked him, and he said he did it because the branches were hitting me in the face when he passed by on the mower, and he did us a favor. I was floored. She apologized and said she couldn't believe he took as much off as he did. The limbs he cut were at the base of the trunk well into my yard. He cut limbs that have taken years to grow. He cut limbs that were not even pointing in the direction of my neighbor's yard. He made 17 cuts that I can count. My landlord lives in Honduras, so we have very minimal contact. When I signed the lease, I took over all yard upkeep. I've maintained all of the trees and flower beds as well as the yard. I've been the one to groom the trees. I know this may seem silly to some, but this was a crazy beautiful tree, guys. He completely aesthetically changed the look of the tree I've spent the last five years grooming. A tree she spent 15 years caring for. The thing is, the tree in this story is still alive and will likely regrow in due time. The damages here are much less than those other stories. And our second story. You want my best price for working on my day off? Okay. I'm a barber. It's a great gig. In fact, I've never been happier working any job but it does have a few downsides. The biggest one is vacations and holidays. There are very few barbering jobs that offer paid vacation days, holidays, or even sick days. Whenever you're not working, regardless of why, you're not getting paid because unless you own the shop, you're a contract employee. A few years ago, I was working with an owner at his shop, which was in a small Texas town. Even though he was the owner, I'll be referring to him as partner from here on out because that's the way he made me feel. He was a great guy to work with. He and I had gone to barber school together, and he's just an all-around good guy and a good friend. But he's also a no-nonsense kind of guy. We both like to have a good laugh, but he's not putting up with anything he doesn't feel like putting up with. Nobody's going to push him around, customer or not. It was a few days before Thanksgiving, and he was planning on closing the shop Wednesday night and then not reopening until the following Monday. I was personally very happy with this arrangement, as every shop I've ever worked at takes off for Thanksgiving Day, but reopens for the Friday and Saturday immediately after. My partner feels like his days off, however, especially holidays like Thanksgiving and Christmas, they're meant to be family time, and he's a big believer in that premise. He totally would have allowed me to work those days if it was something I wanted to do, since he understood that not everybody is like he is, and he'd never want anyone working with him to lose out on money just because of something he wanted to do. But I was very glad he was closing down those days because I love those holidays too. Super long setup, I know. So let's get to the actual story. It's Tuesday, two days to Thanksgiving. My partner and I are both working on a customer when in walks eye patch guy. You'll never guess why we call him that. Go on, give it a whirl. Eye patch guy had a serious problem. He told us as he leaned against the pool table in front of our chairs, the barber in his area, a small town north of us, was going to be closed on Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, same as us, and he absolutely had to have a haircut and a shave on Saturday. As it turns out, EPG's barber is a good friend of ours and also went to the same barber school with us. What a coinky dink. His barber sent him down to talk to us in order to check if maybe we could help him. We politely explained to EPG that we were going to be closed those very same days, and unfortunately, we wouldn't be able to help him either. But Eye Patch Guy simply wasn't having none of that. Surely, he tells us, surely one of us could come in and fix him up for the right price. It's at this point that my partner pointed out to him that, besides being closed on those days, both of us live 45 minutes from the shop. Coming in isn't exactly easy. 
Well, I mean, it's not super hard, but it's definitely a pain in the butt. He then goes on to ask him, what's the big deal about Saturday? We're going to be open tomorrow and a haircut and shave on Wednesday would probably look almost as fresh as the one done on Saturday. So why does it have to be Saturday? EPG then tells us, I love to go to the casinos in Shreveport, Louisiana, but before I go, I always like to get a fresh haircut and a shave that same morning. Makes me feel extra fresh and relaxed for when I get there. It's a tradition thing for a little bit of luck. Plus, it may only be a couple days difference, but when I go, I want to look as clean and bright as a new penny. He actually said that crap. My partner looks over at me to see if perhaps I might be interested in coming in, but I'm already shaking my head no. I'm sorry, my partner tells him, but we've both been looking forward to spending time with our respective families on those days, and we won't be able to help you. Well, you must not like money then, Patch Guy angrily shouts at us. Everywhere else I go, barbers have done this for me. I get this kind of thing all the time. Now, this is obviously not true, since, as you may remember, his personal barber had already turned him down for the same request. But out of curiosity, neither of us mentioned that to him. No sense making him madder than he already is. Instead, my partner switches off his clippers. Now, I should mention, and this is something I learned after many months working with my partner, whenever he switched those clippers off while he was still in the middle of a cut, some serious crap was about to go down. Meaning, he was about to say something pretty bad A, or hilarious, or both. You know what, he started, you've talked me into it. For the right price, I'd be glad to get up during my holiday with my family, drive an hour and a half round trip just so I can give one single person a haircut and shave, and I'll even go the extra mile to ensure that it's the best haircut and shave you've ever had. Now that's what I wanted to hear, Eye Patch Guy said, brightening in anticipation. How much we talking? $350, barked my partner in all sincerity. Eye Patch Guy just sat there, leaning up against our pool table in stunned silence, both of us kept waiting to see what he would say. Even the five or six other customers in the shop were eagerly waiting to hear his response. After about 60 arduous seconds in complete silence, EPG finally straightened up and, without so much as a peep, made for the door. Because I really like money, my partner shouted at him just as the door started to close behind him. Considering the time it takes to drive there and back for one customer, 350's reasonable, honestly. And our next story. Karen is trying to poison me. I went outside and put my food on the grill and let it sit for about seven minutes as I went back inside. When I came back out to turn the food, I opened the grill and was uncomfortable with the flames from some grease burning on the bottom, so I bent down to shut off the gas and heard my neighbor's back door slam, and I heard someone running down the stairs. I thought it was unusual, but just made a mental note and didn't look because I avoid them as they're typically openly aggressive toward my family and anyone else we have at our property. I began blowing out the flames now that the grill was turned off. I stood there for a few minutes, blowing out the small flames on the bottom. I say this because I was inhaling heavily to do this, and now I'm upset about that. I decided to remove the steaks and leave the corn on to keep warm, and so I did that and closed the grill. When I closed the grill, I was face to face with my neighbor who was spraying pesticides called Seven directly at the backside of my grill, roughly two feet from my face. I was shocked, but it took me a few seconds to process, and as I was walking back into my house, I was putting together in my mind what she was doing. I waited inside a few minutes to see if she would finish spraying her trees. Maybe three minutes later, I looked out the window and realized she was gone. I immediately went back outside to remove the corn from the grill, and as I did this, she came back outside in the same fashion, slamming her door and actually running down the steps. I could hear her feet on the steps. She began spraying directly behind the grill again. At this point, I confronted her and asked what she was doing and asked her if she understood that she was spraying chemicals into my food. I began filming on my phone at this point. She states on the video that I should move my grill. I lost my temper and began telling her what I thought of her. I yelled at her for about a minute, and all the while, she continued to spray chemicals at the grill, pretending to be spraying her trees. She clearly understood that she was spraying toxic and highly flammable chemicals at the grill while I was cooking food for my family. I informed her that I was going to call the police. I said loudly, you tried to poison my family. She answered back, you got that right. I asked her, what did you just say? And she said, 
I told you to go ahead and call the police. And I said, no. I said, you tried to poison my family. And you said, you got that right. She laughed and shook her head, and I went inside to call the police. I had to throw away nearly $80 worth of food because of this and order takeout for my family. The grill, $1,200 retail, is not usable. Weber Grill Company says I can use the cleaners to clean it, but it has to be boiling water in their special cleaner. The grill could have exploded. I could have served that food to my family and poisoned them. There's so many terrible scenarios that could have happened. Might want to invest in some security cameras. It's harder to deny when somebody's trying to be sneaky or something and LEO has something tangible to see other than what they may perceive as two neighbors being jerks to each other. And our last story. The HOA keeps trying to force my land to join. I live in an HOA neighborhood, but my house is not part of the HOA because my grandfather, the previous homeowner, didn't join the HOA when other neighbors created it. Everyone told him it was a great idea and everything in the HOA would be perfect, but apparently he foresaw the future. And I think that's one of the best pieces of evidence that he was a smart man. Or a reclusive grouch who hates people. But in this case, it was a plus. He resisted joining the HOA all his life, and then I inherited the house with the task of resisting joining the HOA. The HOA board comes to my house not even a month after my grandfather died and I owned the house. They started showing up with consistent regularity all the time and tells me that I need to join the HOA and tries to manipulate me into joining the HOA, gives me paperwork and everything, and I usually slam the door in their face and tell them to F off. After that, they started sending a surveyor to me to measure to see if my fence found HOA property. The surveyors were able to figure out that Grandpa had left a decent amount of reserve space on his property to be able to put a private driveway around if necessary. Now my fence has moved and taken away a chunk of their snobby land. Then a neighbor started putting a trailer with his boat on the side of the road near the exit driveway of my house, arguing that the road belongs to the HOA and it's their private property. It was enough to tow his trailer once to get him to stop doing it. The road's public property that we pay DHEAD for, unless it's on your land. The last time is the third time in a week they can tell me how I can be forced to join an HOA. I pulled out my shotgun and told them they had five seconds to leave my property. They left and never came back. I heard people saying they were going to press charges, but my lawyer says it's my land and them sneaking in here doesn't bode well for them. Some people apparently can't learn from anything but a visual example. Especially if that visual example has a good caliber barrel. Hey guys, thank you all for watching the video. I'll see you in the next one.